Well, hey there, Tab family. It is so good to see you on this Wednesday night, and I uh, hope you're just having a, a great week. We missed you last week. We kind of took off uh, last week as we were getting ready for Easter, and I uh, just had a great Easter celebration uh, as well. And so for all of you that uh, were here for Easter and helped with any of the events across the weekend, we want to thank you for, for that as well. It was just a great uh, weekend celebrating our Savior and uh, the resurrection. So thank you for everything uh, that went into that and uh, so many people involved there. Uh, but tonight we've got a special opportunity. Uh, really, I, I'm so excited to get going tonight and uh, talking about a couple uh, just amazing uh, ministries in our area. And so we're going to be talking about Child Evangelism Fellowship tonight. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about Walk for Life that's coming up uh, as well. And so I'm Pastor Craig, if I haven't had a chance to meet you yet. And uh, we've got uh, a larger crew than we normally do, uh, but we'll just kind of pop around real quick. And uh, can you just introduce uh, yourself and uh, tell kind of what you do with your respective ministry? Mm, Tracy Williams, so the local coordinator of Child Evangelism Fellowship of Tidewater. All right. Thanks, Tracy. I'm Elizabeth Tan, and I am a mom. These are three of my kids, and um, Elizabeth and Benjamin and Peter went last year to be trained uh, through Child Evangelism Fellowship and really enjoyed it, so that's why we're here. Yeah, thank you for being here. I'm Elizabeth, and I worked with Child Evangelism Fellowship last year with my siblings. Elizabeth. I'm Benjamin Tan, and I was a summer missionary last year also. I am Peter Tan, and I also worked with CEF last year. All right, thank you. So, and I am Barb Patton. I am um, district team leader for the Good News Clubs here in Norfolk, which means I sort of oversee the clubs here in Norfolk. And I'm, I'm also the team leader for Suburban Park and Granby Elementary Schools, as well as for this season right now, the ambassador from TAB for the Walk for Life that's coming up. All right, thank you. Well, thanks for popping around and, uh, and introducing yourselves real quick um, and really diving in. So I know a lot of people that are tuning in, they're probably thinking, all right, Child Evangelism Fellowship, uh, we know Tracy, we know uh, kind of, you know, we see her around doing all this really cool stuff. Uh, and then there's the good news clubs that are a part of that. Uh, do you mind just kind of giving us like a maybe a 50,000 foot vision of, all right, here's the Child Evangelism Fellowship and here's how the Good News Clubs fit in, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So Child Evangelism Fellowship was founded in 1937 by Jesse Overholzer at the age of 60. So he, he envisioned an army of child evangelists encircling the globe, and that's what he faithfully prayed for. CES purpose is to evangelize and disciple boys and girls with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to disciple them in the word of God and in a church for Christian living. So the vision is every child, every nation, every day. And the way we do this, our method, is through two primary ministries. TAB is very familiar with the After School Good News Club, where we go into the public schools and share the gospel. We can do this legally as of 2001. The other ministry that TAB may not be as familiar with are the five-day clubs, and this is where the summer missionaries, CYIA, Christian Youth in Action, okay. they come into play. All right, thank you very much. And so. I think, uh, you know, anytime you can hear a story of how a ministry or especially when you see just generations that it have been impacted, uh, I'm so excited tonight because I've heard tidbits. I haven't heard the full, the full story here, uh, but from the Tan family, can you just kind of tell us maybe your personal history with CEF and then just talk about how now it's like, you know, multi, multi-generational, and I uh, just love seeing, seeing that happening. But just can you guys tell us a little bit of your own personal story with um, Child Evangelism Fellowship? Um, yes, I feel really grateful to actually be here at TAB tonight because my first connection with CEF was as a little child at the home of Beulah Arrington. I think maybe she's a member here. 
Arrington, Arrington family. The Arrington family. I'm yeah. not sure if they're still here. Um, but she and my mom trained together. And I remember being a little girl on her front porch hearing Bible stories. I specifically remember the time they told us the story of the king who ripped the pages out of the Bible and threw them into the winter fire. Wow. And hearing about the, the, the um, wonder of God's word and how much of a treasure it is and just have been very impacted by that story. Um, and as I got older, I realized that my grandmother actually had been, I think she must have been one of the first CEF workers back in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. um, she worked in a slum called Biggs Park in Atlanta wow. um, with children. So she must have been kind of in that first generation, um, which was very special to me. When I met Tracy a couple of years ago, she came to our church to tell us about how we could do a ministry in the schools, mm -hmm. a good news club. And through that connection, I don't remember exactly how, we found out that our teens could actually be trained wow. to do this. So we were very excited. Um, three of them did it last year. And we live in Larchmont. And because of COVID, we're able as a family with some of the other teens who trained last year to keep um, more like a five-day club stretched out over weeks okay. going in our neighborhood uh, until the weather got too cold to hold it outside last fall. When it was in the 40s, we decided it was time to stop. <laughs> That's probably smart. <laughs> I like it. So we would like to do that again this year, and we also have, a, have been praying about Park Place. We have a real desire yeah. to see a work in Park Place and um, uh, the McDaniel family who do mission work there is interested in maybe coordinating that. So awesome. that's sort of our. And so, I, okay, so uh, even your, for your grandmother in Atlanta, there was a connection there. And now here with the Arrington family, you got involved there. And now you guys are, have kind of taken on the baton as well. And so now you guys are leading in uh, CEF as well too. So um, I'm always fascinated anytime I get to talk, especially to the next generation and to see the next generation, um, not only excited about following Jesus, but about being leaders as well. And uh, I would imagine in your opportunities, you guys are now investing in other kids, right? And, and learning how to share your faith and, and helping other kids to get excited uh, about God's plans and purposes for their life. So uh, can you guys just give us a little bit of insight just on, on the Good News Clubs from your, your perspective and why it is that you're, you're so passionate about the ministry? Um, I am really interested in them just because I, it really helped me learn how to share the gospel more concisely with kids because I didn't really have an idea of how to do that before. And um, I'm just really excited to learn more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Peter, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, sharing your faith, man. That's a great, that's a great thing. So uh, I, I appreciate your boldness. That's awesome, man. Um, I really enjoyed the five-day clubs because originally I was supposed to be working at a different summer camp. Um, and then when COVID hit, I, it got canceled and I wasn't able to work there. And then we found out about the Good News Clubs and I was like, this seems like a fake camp almost <laughs> and I was like I don't really want to do this um but I was like you should really do it and so yeah when we we did the training camp and I thought why are we covering this material of just sharing the gospel with someone with these same steps and why are we why are we doing this it seems like you can just kind of tell them about it and you don't really need to have like these steps that you always have to follow uh -huh. um but as I went through the camp, I realized at the beginning of the camp, I don't think I really had a, a clear sense in my mind of how to share the gospel. And so doing that camp was really helpful. And um, so then when we went to the five-day clubs, it was really good because I was able to talk with kids about, about Christ. And um, I don't think I'll be doing them this year, but I'll be able to use all of that information that I had in the, in the five-day clubs later at this other camp that I'm working at. So I'm, yeah. I'm really grateful for everything that I was able to learn Absolutely. at that five-day club. Yeah, and I'm going to jump them. in because we reference it as a camp, 
but really CYIA, we train them at training school. So that week long training that we call camp, we use that term loosely, because it wasn't a camp, it was really training school. <laughs> it is very boot camp. Uh, exactly. Boot camp. So it was a fake very, camp. You were you're it was spot a fake on. Camp. You are yeah. <laughs> it's very intense. So when they come, when CYIA summer missionaries come, they have to come prepared. They have to know memory verses. I think there was twenty that you all were expected to know, wow. and they had to write them. And they also have to be prepared to do the word list book. And so the wordless book, this is just a big version of it. And I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but what it has is all the different colors and there's a history behind the wordless book. So the history is that it actually started with Spurgeon. And when oh. he used it, he used only three colors. So it was the black, dark, red, and then white, the clean page. And then from there, it went to Moody Moody continued to use that, and he used the gold page. He added. And then from there, it went to Fanny Crosby, right? Wow. The blind hymnal writer. And so she shared it. Then it went to India. And does anybody know which missionary used it in India? Amy Carmichael, of course. Yeah, Peter, do you know? <laughs> so Peter was doing the missionary story during the summer. And so it went all the way to India, but not in book form. It was actually a flag that she used. So they have to be able to share using the wordless book. So this goes back to a clear, concise, effective way to share the gospel with children. And so they actually have a small version of that. But you see the outside cover has been added since CEF uses this. And can any of you share what the green color means? Uh, the green color stands for once you've been saved, it reminds you that you should continue to grow as a believer and find a church, read God's word, pray, and all the good stuff. Exactly. Awesome. Well, and so you. that's where they have to know that. But more importantly, it's not just knowing the colors and what they mean. Every color, it goes right back to God's word. So when we share with the children, it's not our words, it's God's word. And so that's so important that they know their memory verses and they know how to give the message of salvation in an effective, clear, concise manner for children. So it's very intense, and then they run the five-day clubs. It's not adults that run it. They run it wow, for an hour great. and a half. They're responsible. So you can see Benjamin just smiling because it brings back great memories. It's really intense. And in the beginning, Benjamin, in the beginning, he, he would say it was difficult at first. But then afterwards, it's amazing to see them sort of take that spotlight and run with it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for, for all you have done uh, with the, you know, the, the previous camp. And just I know the seeds that were planted, uh, God's going to continue to use those. And even thinking through now the skill set that you have that, you know, you have that for life. So that's an encouragement, man. I'm excited to, to hear, hear the story. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to, uh, we talked about it a little bit, uh, maybe unpack it a little bit as well. And, and uh, Barbara, you can maybe add some in here as well. Um, but, but the whole idea here at uh, TAB, we talk, we have a, a core value statement that says we play the bench. And what we mean by that is we want to invest disproportionately in the next generation and particularly the next generation of leaders uh, and I love even, you know, um, the original heartbeat behind CEF. I mean, that, that's it really in a nutshell, right? Every, what was it? Every child, every, every child, day, every, every nation, every day. No, that's I, the vision. There you go. And last year, when we look at our statistics, actually in 2018 and 2019, if you look at the latest statistics we have, over 25 million children were reached in one single year around the world. Yeah, that's incredible. So we're seeing that throughout the world, children coming to know God through this organization. Yeah, I love that. So when you think about uh, not, you know, you're, you're uh, I'm trying to think of even how to, how to word it correctly, but you know, you're not uh, as adult leaders, you're not just trying to like pour information right into the next generation. You're actually facilitating an environment where they're they're taking it they're owning it they're processing it and then they're they're empowered to go make a difference 
And I just want to try, I mean, anybody can speak into this, uh, maybe even your per, y'all's perspective, um, but just can you talk about, help, help us as a church, like help us to, to understand um, really the power of em, empowering and equipping uh, the next generation and some of the ways you guys, you just seem like you guys have figured it out. And I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, I don't know the specific question. I just want to try to tap into some of that yeah. gold tonight, Tracy. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about this past year. First of all, um, I worked with these three and five more last summer. And you guys were the highlight of my summer. It really was. And I took the Teaching Children Effectively course this past fall. And I had to do everything that you guys did with all the practicums, the wordless books, the Bible lessons. And I was just like, it was all online. It's like, how did these guys do it? They were up I don't late know. at night and, but, and they were sweating bullets the whole it week. Is, <laughs> it was intense. The practice you guys put in was phenomenal. It was also because we had two really great teachers. Because you were teaching us and Miss Tracy was teaching us. And without, without the good teachers, I don't think I could have learned it. Yeah. I love it. So, but, um, but now it is solidified in my brain. But let me tell you guys a little bit about this past year uh, with the Good News Clubs. Um, I still remember last March when Mrs. Cannon, the assistant principal at Suburban Park, walked in at the very end of club. This was on a Thursday afternoon, and she handed me this paper from the governor saying all after-school programs were canceled. Mm. I'm like, okay. Um, I figured, well, we'll shut down for a couple of weeks, then we'll pick up again end of April. And then that following Monday or Tuesday, schools were closed down. And it was just like, all of a sudden, it's like I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to these kids. You know, they sort of grow on you after a while. But, um, and then throughout the summer, I started wrestling with, okay, Lord, I had eight years of Bible lessons and prayer and Bible memory verses and games. And it's like, I can't. I can't do this on Zoom. Benjamin, you know I'm not the technology savvy person. <laughs> he was our tech person during uh, the five day clubs. But um, I wrestled with that most of the summer, but between Tracy providing a lot of Zoom training and my husband and my son um, helped train mom behind the scenes. So we decided we combined the two teams and we made a combined Suburban Park um, Granby club. Yeah. So typically we have anywhere between 25 and 30 at Suburban Park, maybe 10 to 15 at Granby. Well, right now, this past year, we've had 11 kids virtual every, well, we just switched to Wednesday afternoons, and they're not all there every, um, every week. But we have still been able to reach these kids. Um, two children have made decisions for Christ uh, mm -hmm. since the beginning of the, the club year. But it's been different, and the main thing I've, seen us focusing on th this year. A lot of the kids are already saved, made decisions for Christ, but it's been a discipleship kind of, of ministry mm. where these kids can grow in their walk with, with God. And then also building um, relationships with the families has been um, amazing. You know, all these families live within a mile, a mile and a half, and there's 11 families. So that's mm. easy to do in a couple hour thing um, to visit. We've dropped off um, goodie bags and such for the v different holidays. But um, first of all, just getting back to the discipleship uh, aspect, the lessons that are being taught, these aren't just like Jonah and the big fish and Noah on the boat kind of lesson. These are in-depth lessons taught on a kid's, kid's level, but filled with, with biblical truths that mm -hmm. really help these kids get grounded in, um, in the word of God. So just to see the questions they're, they're asking and their interaction, uh, we definitely have to think outside the box to keep the kids engaged. They're already in front of a screen, you know, the entire school day. It's like, who wants another 45 minutes of sitting in front of a screen? One of their favorite games is review game. Um, if they get the answer right, they get to put a sticker up tell me where to put a sticker on my face. So <laughs> that sort of keeps their attention. There you attention. go, yeah. Hey, I, can, see I get it. Miss Barb with smiley faces <laughs> all over her face. But, um, you know, outreaches to the families. Uh, Tab provided the Thanksgiving boxes, which went to a number of the Clubbers' families that were in need. Delivering goodie bags had been my favorite part. 
just stopping at the door knocking. Sometimes they're home, sometimes they're not. Just drop them off for, sure. for Halloween or Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, Easter, you know, kind of thing. So that's been just a real blessing when they show up at the door. Miss Barb! It's like <laughs> just for them to know that they're not forgotten. Yeah. has been um, an incredible blessing. Uh, yeah. Sending kids, sending cards to the kids and the moms you know, after I talk to them on the phone, just to let them know that, hey, we're still here for you. We can't see you face to face every week, but, but mm. you're not forgotten. I took a couple weeks ago, I took some balloons to a girl, uh, Clubber, who was her 10th birthday, and I showed up at the door with just three dollar store balloons in a card. She gave me the biggest, longest oh, hug. Man. You know, she almost knocked me over. I mean, she's taller yeah. than me already <laughs> at 10 years old. But I mean, just, just to see the smile and, you know, how, mm -hmm. what that meant. Yeah. to her so um, and also we we've mailed out uh, weekly quiet time sheets that the kids get little devotionals in the mail every week for the kids to work on and then they bring them back the following week to club mm -hmm. um, another way my husband's helping us work on one clubbers had to drop out because of um, mom's working from home now and needs the laptop and they only have one laptop so the little guy can't be in club, you know, online anymore. So Glenn's got an old laptop that he's gotten up and running, oh, and so we're hoping to be able to get to him. And I told mom about that last week when I was dropping off his goodie bag, and she's like, I love you. Have I told you lately that I love oh, you? Wow. <laughs> you know, so just being able to have those kind of connections with, mm -hmm. with the families have, has been uh, great this year. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they've, the kids are growing, uh, not so much in numbers, you know, we've got that same group of kids, but, uh, but they're there mm -hmm. and uh, they're learning. We've had one kid join us on the Easter, uh, Easter egg scavenger hunt that we had this past Saturday. <laughs> uh, one girl and her family came to church this past Sunday and I got yeah. a text from mom today that they're planning on being here this That's coming great. Sunday. So, um, so these kids are getting grounded in God's word. And one quick final story. Um, but this was just to see the depth. One clubber, well, we had, he hasn't been in club recently because he's in a different school, but his biological father passed away. Mm. So we went to the um, memorial service and uh, an older brother got up there and talked about, oh, the pastor opened up with a poem, Poetry of Life. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting, Lord. Where's this service going? And um, so then clubber, he's in seventh grade now because we've just maintained contact. But he said, you know, I love my dad. I'm going to miss my dad. He said, I really don't have a whole lot to say, but he said, I want to share some scripture with you. So he handed the mic over to the pastor, pulled out his Bible. He said, John 3.16, and he read John 3.16. He said, let me tell you what that means. All right, this is the seventh grader. And then he went to, he says, let me share another verse with you. And he went to Matthew, uh, in my father's house are many mansions, you know, I go there to prepare a place for you. And um, he's like, and let me explain that one to you. And then he went to one in Revelation, uh, I don't know the references, but you know, in heaven where there'll be no more sorrow, no more death, no more tears, mm -hmm. you know, every tear would be wiped away. He says, and what that means is, you know, as soon as he started reading John 3.16, I mean, I'm glad I had my mask on because I just lost. <laughs> and I went up to him afterwards and gave him the biggest hug. Um, I said, you were so bold and courageous to do that. And I said, I, God's got big plans for you, but I don't know what it is. But for a seventh grader to stand up and share that boldly, you know, God's word, you know, it's, mm. I know he goes to church, so it's not all the good, good news club, but it's nice to know that those seeds are just growing. Yeah. And it's, it was I mean, it's, it seems like to, to me, and I don't want to... I'm, I'm going to jump in yeah, because, please. you know, we always, with, in CEF, we talk about numbers, right? It was great to talk about 25 million. It's a large number. It sounds wonderful. But we can't forget the stories, each individual child and their life that's transformed. So the number of children that we're reaching this year because of COVID has been lower. Our numbers have been lower. Before COVID, we were in 35 schools doing Good News Clubs. Mm. Now, with virtual, we're doing 18. It's still a testament to God. It's still a praise. It's still a blessing. But it's all about 
how a life is transformed and how a child is transformed eternally and forever. Mm -hmm. So with the After School Good News Clubs, we evangelize and we disciple. Children that are young can receive ch uh, Christ. If you look at Corey Tim Boom, she was five when she accepted Christ mm -hmm. as her savior. James Dobson was three years old. So first, we have to reach the children while they're young. Sure. And then also, it's the discipling. So when we have an after-school good news club, we're evangelizing and we're discipling. There's two components to it. So you're always reaching the saved and the unsaved children. So you're discipling those children so they can be that army of child evangelists for that child to get up at his dad's funeral wow. and to share John 3:16. That's how many years she's been investing through the Good News Club in those children. Mm -hmm. And so that's just one of the ministries, the After School Good News Club. But then when it comes to equipping the teenagers, so the other ministries, CYIA, we train, we equip, we prepare them. But not only do we train them, but like you said, we give them that opportunity to put it in action. And that's the five-day club. Because we don't want it to be head knowledge. We don't want it to stop there. We want them to apply it. And once you've applied it, then you can actually, in the future, continue to go back to it. And I'm going to have Elizabeth share, because she hasn't yet. But before I have her share, I'm just going to um, just give a small glimpse of a letter that I received from one of our students. I won't share who it was from CYIA. But here's just a paragraph that this particular um, student said. This is the letter she wrote. I just wanted to let you know how much you impacted me and how I've been able to use the skills you and God equipped me, me with so that we can teach kids. I enjoy the chance that I got to share the gospel with kids at club, and I really want to get comfortable sharing about Jesus in informal places, make it an everyday part of life. Wow. Thank you for how you have inspired, encouraged both me and my siblings to share the good news about Jesus with others. Yes. This is child um, evangelists at work. Yeah, this is great. what we want to see. Yeah, I love that. Thank and you. And Elizabeth, can you share? Because you haven't shared yet. Can you share, please? Yes. <laughs> um, so last year I did five-day clubs with Miss Tracy and Miss Barb and my siblings and a few other kids that I knew. And was just really cool because we got to be the teachers to younger children and we were sharing the gospel with them. Mm. And it was just really amazing for me because I got to put my faith into action and I learned more about how to share the gospel, which is what God calls us to do. And I just really, it was really special for me because I haven't had the chance before last summer to be actively doing that. So I really enjoyed that. And after five day clubs, we were able to um, run our own club weekly. And it was really cool because I was able to teach the kids Bible stories and be telling them just about who God is and how they can connect with God and what it means to be a Christian. And it was just really special to be able to have that experience and get to be sharing the gospel. And it was yeah, last cool summer stuff. during COVID, during COVID, when so many people were not going out, this summer ministry continued. And these three with five more summer missionaries and their families, they decided to move forward with this ministry. Wow. And because they did, they were able to hold four five-day clubs, one of them was here at TAP, yeah. 52 children were enrolled, and three children accepted Christ Amen. because they were so bold to move forward. And then to hear them say, this family, this family continued to take the good news into their community. They were the next generation leading their peers, yeah, leading great. their community. That's what we want to see. Yeah. We want to empower them. They are the next generation. Wow, I love it. And I think for me as a mom, I don't know how many people are participating who might have children or grandchildren who could um, potentially be interested in this program, but I would 
highly encourage anyone who has Christian um, children or grandchildren just to make it available, make that option available. It's, um, it's not free, um, although there's some scholarship help uh, potentially available. But um, as a mom, after teaching my kids Bible stories for years and years and trying to um, do a really good job of, uh, you know, whether it's being a Sunday school teacher, working with my children at home, whatever, I had that same experience, I think, as maybe Barb was saying, of just feeling very teary to hear, well, first of all, to watch my children studying their Bibles like crazy so they could really tell the story accurately. Mm -hmm. And I was very thankful that CEF put such an emphasis on accuracy to the Word of God. And they don't want it to be done sloppily or carelessly. And so watching um, Elizabeth and another girl were our primary storytellers um, and watching them study and then present those facts in such detail, but they really engaged the children. Um, it did, it, it, it just, it made me feel like it was a little foretaste of heaven. Yeah. I was so thankful. That's awesome. Um, and I would encourage anyone who has the opportunity to encourage teens to do this. And that was a great intro, if I can jump on. So this year, looking at uh, CYIA, we actually have, so last year we had eight teens. This year so far, we're at seven, with two more are going to apply. So it looks like we're going to have nine CYIA teens for this year and one stint. So for TAP, actually we have one of um, our students here at TAB, Noah Conwell. Yeah, cool. He's going to be joining us, which is I Day's yeah. uh, grandson. So, so excited cool. about that. But our hope is to see more teens in the future be a part of CYIA. We want this to grow so that there's not just 10 teens, maybe there could be 10, 20, 30, 40 in the future. So, we have that vision. We want to see it grow. So, if we have any of our teens who are interested this year, to please let me know, if not this year, be praying about next year. And then I also just want to mention that we're looking for host for five-day clubs. Okay. So once these teens are prepared, we need to have host families that say, hey, come to my backyard, come to my front yard. We'd love to have a five-day club. Cool. All right, so for those of you that are tuning in, you, you heard uh, really the need for this summer. Uh, looking for some host homes out there. Maybe that's something that, that interests you, uh, that you want to open up your backyard and be a part of. That, that would just be a, an incredible experience. I know God would bless you uh, through that. And uh, I've just been encouraged as uh, we've talked and just to be able to listen and share. I think oftentimes, you know, we're, we're thinking, um, and these are over generalizations, and I'm just, I'm just speaking straight from my my mind. So I think oftentimes we try to water things down so much, or we try to say, well, we've got to, you know, if we're going to reach the next generation, we need to like do, you know, all this or make it fun or this or that. And what I hear is really, it's the challenge of this that has really inspired you and what you really like. Um, it's not backing down off a challenge, it's really being presented a challenge uh, and really being called to, to step up. Uh, and I love that about, um, you know, CEF and just the entire organization. So thank you. And uh, I'm excited to see what God continues to, to do. Um, we kind of covered, I know we, we covered from a, uh, ways that people can get involved. Uh, but Tracy, can you just uh, point people one more time? And Alex, maybe you can throw up on the lower thirds down there. Uh, a good place to connect with you, like a, a website to be able to connect with you. Uh, for people who want to take a next step and get uh, involved in this great ministry? So anyone can definitely go to the website, um, ceftidewater.org. And if anybody would like additional information on CYIA, five-day clubs, if they would just send me an email directly, that would be great. And it's director um, at ceftidewater.org. Right. So um, please feel free to just give me an email um, shout out, and that would be great. All right, so make sure I got this right. It's uh, director at ceftidewater.org. All right, director at ceftidewater.org. 
walkforlife.org. Awesome. Uh, we're about to shift in a minute. We're going to talk about uh, Walk for Life, though, uh, but we are going to shift in a minute uh, just into a time of prayer. So along those lines uh, is, you know, thinking, thinking, you know, specifically about the activities that you guys are about to start this summer, or it could be even uh, from a, like a vision standpoint of what you're wanting to see God do on a big scale. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your big, like, crazy prayers that you're praying right now in this season uh, for God to do through through the ministries of uh, CEO. I think just to multiply our efforts, because before COVID, we were in 35 schools, and what's interesting is that week when schools closed, we had a good news club that was supposed to start. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, we were supposed to have another Thalia Elementary school that starts. So we were at one point, and we were looking at continuing to move forward, but with COVID, it sort of kind of it brings us down to 18 and now we have to rebuild. And that's hard and that's discouraging as well. So we really, really want to pray that God will continue to increase, that there will be more church partnerships that will help us come along and sponsor clubs. There are 142 public elementary schools in Tidewater. Wow. Before COVID, we were only in 35. So our hope, our vision, is again, every child, every nation, every day. Yeah. We want to be, while legally we can right now, we want to be in every school. We want to be able to target every child. Yeah. So we really want God to go before us and to open those doors. So we're asking him to do that. We're asking for churches to come on board. We're asking volunteers to create teams to go in. We need the financial support to be able to do this, to move forward. And our foundation is prayer. So we need to be praying together and coming together to do that. So if anybody would like to be a prayer partner with CEF, we encourage that. We would love to have more people stand behind us. Well, I love that. So we have, we legally have the opportunity to be in, in the public school system, right? You know, and to, to be able to present uh, the truth of God's word. Um, so I, you know, church, I just, Quite frankly, you know, I just want to challenge us with that. We complain about a lot of things in our culture, right? And boy, if we could just, if this was different or if that was different or whatever the case may be, we have a legal right to be in the public school system sharing the gospel with kids. So I don't know how else to make that more explicit <laughs> on a great thing we can do positively to impact our culture, right? Um, so we want to definitely take advantage of that. And uh, Benjamin, did you have something yeah, you wanted to say? All right, I'll thing. go for it, man. So I was thinking with the, especially with the summer, summer um, five-day clubs, it's kind of impacting four different groups of people there, like the actual summer missionaries, so us, because we're growing as we're, as we're reading God's Word and teaching people, and then we're reaching out to those unbelieving children um, and then we're also reaching out to the believing children who are still coming to the five-day clubs and then Further past the children we're reaching towards their towards their parents because like there was one five-day club where right afterwards the the the, um, the Girl ran right up to her mom and started just telling everything that she had learned in the in the Bible story awesome. And I thought wow, we're not just reaching the kids. We're reaching the parents, too. Yeah. And so I think my prayer requests would be that, that everyone, both us and the kids and the adults, would be taking one step closer to God. And that could be, it could be the first step in their, in their Christian walk or many, many steps. Um, and just that they would take that next step in growing closer to God. I love it. Yeah, thank you. That's a great prayer request. And uh, we're going to transition again in a minute uh, to, to a, a, a time of prayer requests. So these are, these are great launching pads uh, that we'll definitely pray for. Uh, if you're tuning in tonight and there's something that we can pray for you about, please go ahead and start uh, in the chat there. Let us know how we can be praying for you uh, as well. But before we get to that point, every year at TAB, uh, through TAB, we participate in Walk for Life. It's always just an incredible uh, event uh, to come alongside the Crisis Pregnancy Center. And so um, back in January, if you're tuning in tonight, we're not going to get into a lot of the uh, what, you know, the ministries of Crisis Pregnancy Center because um, we did a, a tab midweek back in January. Go back and look at that. Uh, we, we took a whole 
um, tab midweek and we really talked about Crisis Pregnancy Center and what the, the mission is and, and all of those things there. But Barb, uh, tonight, I know a lot of people are tuning in and uh, just to, to make, um, to let people know how they can get involved in the Walk for Life, really why it's so important that we, um, that from a funding standpoint, from a walking standpoint, we really get behind uh, Walk for Life. But can you just take a few minutes and just share with people uh, how to get involved, why it's important, that All kind right. of thing. Um, last year, the Walk for Life was in full swing when COVID hit, and Toby DeBoss was like, okay, God, what do you want us to do now? They had a virtual walk. This year's again, will be a virtual walk. It is on May 8th, but I so clearly remember Toby came on a special Facebook Live that Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock, and in tears, it was like, but God... And they were already, at that point, $25,000 over what they had ever made in wow. any of the walks before. And because of that, um, I don't know how these search engines work. You probably know Benjamin. But now, if a woman types in abortion, the Kime Centers come up number one. Hmm. So that's the first thing they're able to see. Um, they've been able to extend the call center hours. You know, women are home during the day. A lot of them are working working so in the evenings when they get home they can call the kind center and it's been told that you know that lady on the other end whoever's answering the phone has 60 seconds to get it right mm -hmm. to get this woman to make an appointment to come in to talk so that's what these funds for the walk for life uh, go to their goal every year is a thousand sponsored walkers um, 2008 was TAB's biggest year. We actually had 46 sponsored walkers, wow. <laughs> which was like, oh, I don't remember that year. I've got t-shirts going back to 2003. So the Walk for Life has been around for a while. But last year we had seven sponsored walkers. So I think we could do better this year. I would like to shoot for over double that. So for 15 uh, sponsored walkers, you can go online if they can put up the, um, on the bottom third, the CPC, what is it? CPCfriends.org slash walk. You can uh, sign up online uh, to walk. You can sign up to sponsor someone uh, right there online. Our, my goal for TAB has always been everybody who walks through that door that considers TAB church, their, their church family, to either walk, be a sponsored walker, or sponsor somebody who is, even if it's five or $10. So even on that website, you can put in Tab Church. You'll see a list of people who are walking, and you can sponsor them right there. Or if you want to do the old pen and paper way, these will be available on Sunday morning. I'll be out there in the atrium or outside if it's a nice day. And you can do the pencil and paper um, copy too. But I'd like to challenge um, families with young kids to get out there and walk with their kids. Mm. Typically, it's been at the zoo. So I mean, since my guys were little, we, oh, a morning at the zoo, this is great, you know? There you go. <laughs> hey, who wouldn't? But um, I still remember the afternoon when Christopher, our oldest, came home from Granby High School. I think he was a sophomore or junior. And he said, Mom, do you have that, um, that phone number for that crisis pregnancy place, you know, the Walk for Life? You know, my heart sort of skips a beat there for a second. I was like, yeah, why? He said, well, a friend of mine thinks his girlfriend is, is pregnant. But because of all those years of teaching him that life begins at conception and that life is about, every life is precious, he knew as a sophomore, junior in high school that there was an organization out there that could help his friend's girlfriend. It, wow. it ended up she wasn't, but, um, but it was neat so um, that Powerful. he knew that that was there for her and for his friend. So let me encourage you families um, with young kids, make it a family project. Hmm. They offer neat incentives. You get cool t-shirts. Um, the kids can get t-shirts or little stuff, justice plush dolls. And at Kids Church, there is going to be um, a special guest this Saturday, so you don't want to miss, or Sunday, Sunday morning at Kids Church. So make sure you are there. We're having a special guest join us. The walk is virtual on May 8th. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look. There's gonna be something on Facebook Live, but I saw Pastor Mike's eyes light up when he walked into your office and we were talking. And it was like, oh, I can see Mike's <laughs> eyes spinning. So he was planning on 
we're going to be doing some kind of virtual walk as a church family, so I'll get the word out So as soon as all that comes together. I like it. Well, that sounds good, and I love the goal there. Everybody walking or everybody sponsoring a walker, and uh, I think that's, uh, I, I think we can definitely uh, find 14, 15 walkers this year. Um, so I just think that's great, particularly thinking of it uh, as a family type of event. And uh, I just can't think of a, a, a more powerful thing for a family to get around. So that's a, that's a great um, reminder there. And I, I do just want to, I don't know if, if Alex caught it there. And so on the lower thirds, uh, it'll come up the, the website. I believe cpcfriends.org slash walk. Slash walk. cpcfriends.org slash walk. So you can go there and find more information. And again, Barb will be on Sunday. You're going to be either in the atrium or out front. Correct. She'd love to connect Correct. with you uh, as well. So we definitely want to be praying uh, for that. So uh, let's go ahead. We want to transition into our time of prayer. And I'll, I'll, I'll kick that off for, for us, uh, just praying for CEF, uh, praying for, um, you know, I think it's been kind of a pruning season for all of us in a lot of ways. Uh, but, you know, just being reminded of like, you know, we've had this opportunity uh, to be able to really personalize the ministry and just hearing even stories of you, Barb, of like going uh, over to the kids like houses and dropping off balloons and stuff like those are going to be memories that kids have forever. And I think even in church world, you know, it's been kind of a pruning season, but we've been able to you can, I, I think, kind of get back to the heart of relationship and the things that, that maybe um, you know, we're kind of supposed to be there all along. So, um, I think that we, you know, we will be praying, uh, as you're in this rebuilding stage that, you know, God will continue to bless that, uh, and continue just to, to grow deep roots in these kids' lives, uh, as well too. And definitely praying for, uh, the walk coming up here pretty soon. It's April already. Can you believe that? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> One month away. I know. So let me let, let me uh, dive in there, and then uh, again start start uh, letting us know how we can pray uh, for you tonight um, as well too. And so uh, I tell you what, I'll jump in. I'd love to just pray for CEF and pray for all the things that are happening there. And uh, one of the ten kids, can I have you guys pray for our, our walk for life and really just the walk for life big picture in general? Uh, I know lots of churches are involved in that. So I'll kick us off, and then if one of you guys will pray for that. Or gals. All right. Father, we thank you so much for, uh, again, for tonight to be able to come into your presence and uh, just to celebrate all the things that you are doing. You are active, Lord. This has been a, a crazy season, I know, for all of us. For uh, in so many ways, it's kind of just felt like a reshuffling uh, period now for an extended amount of time. But you have just been doing some amazing things and bringing life out of situations that only you can do. And so we praise you for that. And Father, we thank you for tonight that we've been able to learn uh, about child evangelism fellowship and about the heartbeat of this ministry that goes back all the way to the 1930s. It's amazing uh, to think about just the history and all the lives that have been impacted through the years and to think about the generations now that are being impacted and changed as a result of this ministry, Lord. So I pray that you would continue to provide. I pray here locally that you would provide those host homes that are needed. I pray that you would rise up uh, those leaders, Lord. I just pray for your provision and for your blessing uh, over this critical season for um, Child Evangelism Fellowship. And um, we just pray that uh, as uh, growth comes, Lord. I know we've all kind of been in this pruning season, Lord, and in pruning seasons, I know you're preparing all of us for new growth, and so I just pray that this new growth that comes uh, through CEF over this season would just be uh, strong uh, growth, Lord, that would just be so uh, anchored and rich uh, in your presence and in your will and what you want to bring about through that ministry and uh, we just are eagerly anticipating all the things you're going to do this summer, all the, the next generation of leaders that are going to be more equipped to share the gospel, all the people that hear the gospel for the first time, whether that's kids. And as we've been reminded of how that overflows back into the home. And so we thank you for that. Thank you for your provision on 
opening up a door for the gospel to be shared in our local school systems, Lord. Thank you for that. That's a, that is a responsibility that you have given us to steward. And so I just pray that you would break our, our hearts and open up our eyes uh, to be involved in, uh, in this amazing ministry. So uh, thank you for Tracy. Um, thank you for Barb. Thank you for the Tan family and so many that, that dedicate uh, their lives and dedicate to so much of their energy uh, to this ministry, Lord. We thank you for them, and uh, we we love you. Uh, we give you the praise and glory for all of this. Uh, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Dear Father, thank you for um, sustaining the Crisis Pregnancy Center for all these years, and especially for these last few years, have you have provided over what um, they needed. Please continue to do so this year um, and provide these 15 walkers um, from Tab Church and um, help it not just to be something that we are fundraising for just in this next month, but something that we are actively um, praying for and involved in and um, helping out the community by um, sharing about what the Crisis Pregnancy Center is doing. And um, please continue to bless their work and um, provide just the right number of funds that they need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. All right. All right, Sarah Hall, thank you. We've got a, a, a prayer request. Um, it says, hey, Kiana and Sam, I just want to tag on to the earlier prayer and pray for these girls and all the other young, young adults uh, who are on fire for God, that they are full of faith, security in who they are in God's eyes. Uh, get and stay involved in the Big C Church and don't ever settle for Satan's lies. I thank God for their creativity and love for this young adult group. I pray that they never think what they do is too little or, or not enough, but that God continues in leading these ladies and saving souls and building his kingdom. So um, just a little uh, backstory on that is uh, Kiana Love uh, and Sam Verhagen are two young adults uh, here that uh, were kind of, you know, they're uh, out of college, um, kind of starting professional life and all that. They grew up in TAB and uh, just the Lord, like, both of them, and they didn't know each other before, but it was really awesome. Uh, two conversations with, with both of these ladies um, kind of separately of God just like really uh, impressing on their heart. Like we've got to reach like young adults and like college students and, you know, in our area. And uh, they've just been on fire doing that. And it's been awesome to see here at TAB just a lot of, you know, 20 somethings that have uh, really excited about what God's doing. And through TAB and just serving the community and all of that. Um, so Sarah is asking for prayers for um, Kiana and Sam uh, as they lead that, that ministry. Um, so uh, Barb, would you mind just saying a prayer for Kiana Love and Sam Verhagen and uh, thanking, thanking the Lord for, for them and just continuing to expand their influence? Oh, Father, we thank you uh, for these ladies with their, their heart for you, Father, and for seeing... Uh, the young adults around us, Lord, it's a hard season for these young adults coming out of college, entering the, the real world for the first time, mm -hmm. Lord, a lot, big time of transition. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would use uh, these, these ladies as well as the rest in the group, Lord, just to be a source of blessing and encouragement as they uh, walk this season together with them. Pray that they would stay rooted and uh, grounded in your truth, Father, and that you would just... Uh, give uh, Sam and Kiana just creative ways to, to reach out uh, to the young adults uh, here within our church family as well as within the community, Father. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Barb. All right, let's see. All right, we have um, just uh, two uh, individuals that we can be praying for tonight. And uh, thank you, Jimmy King is uh, just continuing to ask for speedy recoveries for uh, Johnny Harrell. So Johnny and Linda Harrell, dear people here at TAB, Johnny 
uh, had to have some heart procedures here recently and is in the recovery process. Uh, but want to be praying for Johnny. And then um, Barbara King uh, continued just to pray for Steve Herrett. And so uh, Steve Herrett has um, had an, uh, an ongoing battle with cancer. God um, mir- did a miraculous work in Steve's life. Um, but just the ongoing kind of, you know, care and all of that that comes with it. Uh, wanting to pray for Steve as well, too. So, um, Ms. Tan, can I have, do you mind praying for Johnny Harrell and just recovering from his heart procedure? And um, I'll, uh, one of you kiddos, uh, Peter, can I, do you mind praying for um, Steve Harrett? So he would, uh, he'd love to know you were praying for him tonight. Does that sound good? All right, but we'll, we'll start from, with Ms. Tan first. Dear Lord, we thank you that not a molecule in the universe is ever out of place, mm-hmm. that you govern all things we thank you that your power um, never stops that you don't go to sleep um, even though we do and so we pray Lord for um, Johnny Harrell now even though I don't know him um, I know you know all the details of what he needs in his recovery and I pray Lord that you would um, enable his body to grow strong and healthy as he recovers from this procedure and I especially pray Lord that he would grow um, closer to you that his soul would be nourished and um, fed even more deeply than ever before as he draws close to you in this um, uh, unusual time of uh, life, Lord. And uh, we pray especially that those who are caring for him would um, see the light of Christ shining in his life and that he would be able to give testimony to what you have done in his life in a powerful way. Um, and that others would be drawn to you even in this very tumultuous period. And we pray, Lord, that the rest of the recovery would be smooth and that you would get all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear Father, please help um, Steve here as he has cancer. Please um, continue to bring him through this time and um, give him strength and encouragement. Please help him to be able to give his um, worries to you and um, be able to relax and have peace about it. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. Let's see. I get multiple st- streams. Some people cheat on the on this, and they text me directly, prayer requests. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's You cheating. just church people. You, you have know? smart people in oh, your congregation. You know? <laughs> 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 All right, let's see here. Oh, you know what? I think I'm looking at the wrong uh I think I'm looking at the wrong text strand, so you know, that that happens as well too. So, I'm sorry. It's my fault, church family. So there you go. I can confess when I'm in the wrong. So, all right. Um here we go. All right. So, uh, pray for all the new families uh, that this, thank you, Sarah. So she's uh, praying for all the new families that came over Easter weekend, uh, that we do a good job of connecting with them and making them feel like part of our family. It says feel like party of our family. And I like that word party actually too. Let's make them feel like it's a party. I love that. Uh, pray over our current families here at TAB that we find great ways to stay connected with them so they don't feel lost or forgotten. So I love that. Uh, Just wanting to pray, I'm sure, you know, lots of churches and praise God. I've talked to several pastors in the area. Um, It just seems like Easter, uh, lots of people were were coming and kind of wanting to get connected in lots of churches around the area. So I think we can pray for Tab, but we can expand it out. We just want to see people get connected in various churches and, um, and feel, be a part of what God's doing um, in our community. So, uh, Tracy, do you mind just praying for all the pe- just thinking about, uh, it'd be awesome if there was some way to kind of be able to tell all the, the people who stepped into a church for the first time, just in Tidewater over this past weekend, and just thinking about what God's doing in all those lives and praying that they would get connected. Uh, and then specifically for the, the people that came here, uh, through tab, but just, uh, do you mind just saying a prayer for all the people um, in Tidewater that took a step to, to try out a church this past weekend. Lord, how we know that your love and your mercies endure forever. 
Lord, we just come before you. You tell us to pray without ceasing. So we just thank you that you are a God that hears our prayers and you answer them. So we thank you. We thank you that you have just drawn these individuals to churches. And we thank you that there were so many that attended here at TAB, so many individuals that attended churches throughout America during Easter. So we mm -hmm. thank you. We thank you that you are the one who draws them, Lord. And we just pray. We pray for those that do not know you personally, that they will come to know you, Lord. We pray that each individual will find a church home, find a church family, Lord, and they will find you, the most important part, Lord. So we ask, we ask for those families who are not plugged into a church, they will find a home church, Lord. They will find you, and that they, Lord, will call out to you if they don't know you. So we ask for salvation for the lost. We ask for those individuals that find you, Lord, that they will continue to grow, to grow closer to you. I pray for other church members to be able to connect, to be able to uh, share who you are in their life with these new individuals that come to church. So we just pray. We pray for your favor to go forth, Lord, upon the churches, that they will know how to wisely reach out to these individuals. We pray for those that maybe have uh, just been lost during this season, who do know you personally, but have not connected and stayed uh, true to you, the source of life. We just pray that they will um, come back to you, Lord, and that they will just cry out to you, and you will hear them, and that they will draw to you. So we just pray for uh, the churches to be full again, Lord, and that they will just be overpouring with uh, believers who love you and who want to serve you, Lord. So we pray that. We pray for revival in our nation, a revival here in Virginia, a revival in Tidewater. Let us be the family that goes out and share who you are with our friends, with our neighbors, with our workers, Lord. And we thank you for hearing us and answering our prayers in your name. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Jerry Jones, thank you for, for tuning in tonight. And I uh, just want to continue to pray for Linda as she continues to struggle uh, with the debilitating disease of ALS. And I uh, pray for me to be able to support and take care of her on a daily basis. So uh, Jerry and Linda, thank you for, for tuning in tonight. And uh, y'all are in our prayers, but it's so good to, to just have a moment to connect through prayer uh, tonight as well. So um, we want to continue just to, to pray for Linda, pray for, for strength for you uh, as well. And uh, so let's, uh, let's take a, a moment and um, I'll, I'll pray for, um, for Linda and uh, Barbara, do you mind praying for Jerry and just for his, um, uh, just that he would have the, the strength that he needs on a daily basis as well too. Father, we come before you and uh, Lord, we, we love uh, Jerry and Linda dearly. And uh, we just continue to lift up Linda to you. We lift her physical body up to you. We lift up um, this ALS that uh, she's struggling with, Lord. And um, I just pray your will over her life. I pray uh, your empowerment, Lord. I pray uh, that you would uh, work in her, in her bones, in her body, Lord, uh, in a miraculous way. We do ask boldly that you would heal her body. And uh, we ask that you would just have your way in Linda, Lord, but I pray in the meantime, Father, that you would give them the peace, uh, that you would give them joy in the midst of, um, of this uh, trial that they are in, and uh, we lift them up. I just pray that they would feel your love tonight in a tangible way. I pray that they would feel the prayers of their church family just surrounding them and encouraging them, and uh, we lift up Miss Linda to you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Oh, and Father, I echo Craig's uh, prayers for Linda and as, as well as for Jerry, Lord, as he serves her so lovingly and faithfully in whatever ways um, that she needs. I pray that you would strengthen him uh, in body and in spirit for, uh, for each task that lays ahead of him. And Father, uh, together would they keep their eyes um, on you through this uh, very difficult uh, chapter in their lives, in their marriage. We pray that you provide the, the resources that they need, that the, uh, Jerry would uh, be okay with reaching out and asking for help uh, to
tangible kind of help when he needs it. And as we as a church family can uh, continue to surround both of them uh, with your love in tangible ways. So we pray all these things in Jesus' name. I think I might, I might be the one that's con confused tonight. So you see what happens when you take a week <laughs> off and then you, you kind of get, uh, get behind. But I think we, we're getting everybody's um, prayer, uh, prayer request. Um, all right, uh, we've got Sharon Swink. Uh, absolutely, thank you, Ms. Sharon, is uh, asking for prayers for son uh, Dave, who is uh, having a reoccurring uh, of diverticulitis. Uh, please pray for complete healing and relief from the pain um, and so just that God would give him strength to be able to continue to do work, uh, do it all on his welding job. So, uh, we want to continue to pray for, for Dave. Yes. Thank you for sharing, for letting us know uh, about this prayer request. And, um, Elizabeth, do you, do you mind praying for, uh, just for Dave and, um, diverticulitis is the, is what he's specifically dealing with. Um, but I think the biggest prayer is just for, for healing, for strength. Um, he's trying to maintain his job through all this as well, too. So, uh, Dave. Yeah. Dear Father, thank you for Dave and um, that he has a church. And please encourage him as he's struggling. Give him the strength he needs, both physically and emotionally. Thank you that he is able to keep working, please give him encouragement and help him to keep going on with his work. And I pray that you would heal his body if that's your will and make him well again and cause this hardship to be something that draws him even closer to you and that he would be able to see the good in it even though it is so hard to be sick and just living in a fallen world. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. Tans, can I put y'all on the spot real quick? Just, is there anything we can, I can be praying for you guys and we can be praying for you as uh, you finish up, I, I guess you, you're finishing up the school year. So that's a, that's a lot happening uh, there. Uh, anything else we can be praying for you guys about? With respect to CEF, Peter had. Oh, I'm sorry. With respect to CEF, um, Peter had mentioned under Rafe. Just we're asking for boldness and more confidence. Yeah. And certainly, if we could pray for um, just the neighborhoods right around us. We live just next to such a needy neighborhood, Park Place, and mm -hmm. in our hearts. So, if you guys want to pray with us for that, we would be really grateful. Yeah, absolutely. I would and, love that. Um, our. Um, our dad is, my, my husband is um, just going to become the pastor of our church in June. Cool. So um, if another church wants to pray for us, we'd be absolutely. grateful for that too. Yes, Thank absolutely. You. So that's, that's exciting stuff. Uh, and t what's the name of the church? Emmanuel Presbyterian. Emmanuel it's Presbyterian. a little PCA church over cool. near ODU. All right. Sounds good. Well, we'll be praying for Emmanuel. That's, that's awesome news. Anything, any, anything else? I think just being able to work well with the other kids and with just being able to share the gospel effectively through with the clubs that we'll be doing. Awesome. Yeah, I think being part of a team and not being either like kind of working below your team and not really helping out or trying to like take control, it's very easy for me to be like, I know everything, um, but just having that balance with the team, cool. I would love prayer for that. All right, sounds good. All right, well, let's, let's uh, go into a time of prayer. I'd love to just pray, pray for you guys, and let's, let's some fun stuff happening. I mean, you know, your husband taking over, uh, pastor in a church, this is good stuff. So yeah, let's, let's, let's pray for that. Father, we, uh, we do come before you and just thank you for this opportunity to connect with the Tan family. And uh, again, we thank you for their heart. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the burden that you've put on them for this uh, neighborhood that's close to them. 
Uh, Father, every day we all have opportunities right here in our midst, and I thank you that they're, they're open to that. And I specifically pray that you would open up uh, wide doors for them to be able to minister in the Park Place neighborhood. And uh, I just pray that you would just show your favor as they uh, seek to be bold with their faith uh, and step out and make a difference uh, in this neighborhood. And uh, we pray for Pastor Tan as he takes uh, this, this new position um, at Emmanuel Presbyterian, Lord. I pray for that church. I just pray your favor on that church. I pray uh, just wisdom um, as he steps into this leadership role uh, that just lots of fruit and lots of depth would come uh, as a result of this ministry and that you would get the praise uh, and the glory for it, Lord. And so uh, I just pray even now as he gets ready to step into that, I pray that you would give him encouragement. Uh, I just pray that you would put wind in his cells, Lord, as he steps into this uh, this new position. And uh, we look forward to just seeing all the things that will happen uh, as a result. And uh, I pray for uh, Peter here. I just pray that you would continue to, to give him uh, boldness. I just uh, I pray that you would continue to, to use him to do uh, mighty things, Lord. And I pray for Benjamin as uh, he gets ready to, um, as he uh, just navigates the team dynamics and he just thinks about leadership and how to, uh, how to empower others, when to, when to step up, uh, when to, to maybe uh, hold things a little bit more flexibly. Um, I pray that you would give him wisdom uh, as he does that. And uh, Elizabeth, tell me your prayer request one more time. That we would be able to share the gospel effectively. I love it. And I pray for Elizabeth in this prayer request as well, uh, just to be bold again, to be able to share the gospel effectively. And uh, I just thank you again for this training that they've had. Uh, I know that that was not, um, that that was for a purpose and you're going to continue to use them in a mighty way. So I just thank you for this family, Lord, and all that you're doing through them. I pray your favor on all the kids as they get ready to uh, end a school year uh, and all that that involves. I pray your favor on that. Uh, as well. And so we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's see. All right. Julie Doyle. Thank you, Julie, for, for tuning in. And uh, she's wanting to, to pr continue to pray for Jim and Evelyn uh, Henshaw. So um, Jim, uh, a, a teacher many, many years at Norfolk Christian and did uh, lots of uh, many things. And, um, and Jim has uh, been going through some health struggles and, uh, and struggling. Uh, so we want to be praying for Jim uh, Henshaw and then also praying for Pastor Ed's new grandchild. So Pastor Ed and uh, the new grandchild, uh, Courtney and uh, Michael had had a child, I guess two, two weeks ago, I think is uh, what Pastor Ed said. So I want to be praying for this new new grandchild. So, um, Ms. Tan, can I ask you to pray for uh, Pastor Ed's new grandchild? And uh, one of you guys want to take on, or um, Elizabeth want to pray for Jim Henshaw? Sure. All right, perfect. So, Ms. Tan, if you'll start us off um, with uh, Pastor Ed's grandchild, and, uh, and then Elizabeth, if you'll do um, uh, uh, Jim Henshaw. Lord, we thank you that we thank you, Lord, that you give new life and for the wonderful blessing that a new child and a family is. We thank you for um, uh, Pastor Ed and that he's able to be a, a granddad to this mm -hmm. little one and for the mom and dad. Um, and we pray, Lord, that you would knit their family together, that this baby would be a big blessing to them and that they would train this little one for him. Uh, the earliest days of the baby's life to know and to love you. We pray that you would put faith in that little one's heart and that um, that little one um, uh, might be just one who grows up to sing your praises, to shine brightly for you, and to be a, um, a tremendous blessing in the Lord, um, in the world, walking in your um, footsteps as a disciple of Jesus Christ. We pray for wisdom for the parents. We pray for um, unity for the family and that you would bless this whole family unit. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father, thank you for Jim Henshaw and please give him encouragement as he's struggling with his health. Thank you that he is serving as a teacher and 
that he's willing to do that. Please give him um, strength to keep pressing on with just the daily routine of life and that he would um, see you working in his sickness and that he wouldn't be discouraged or um, despair, but that he would just be able to be light where he is, even with his health struggles and hardships. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in tonight. And again, it was such an encouragement just to hear about all the things that are happening. And, uh, and the exciting thing is there's opportunities to get involved, right? It doesn't have to stop here. You can take it to the next level and, uh, and get connected. Uh, lots of different opportunities uh, here. So thank you for taking some time out of your Wednesday. Uh, Tan family, thank you for taking time to come and to share. Tracy, thank you for all you do, your leadership that you do for uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship. Barb, thank you for so many things uh, in the community here at TAB. Uh, you're just uh, so instrumental. So thank you for all that you do uh, as well. And so uh, thanks again, Easter uh, weekend, a lot of people, it was just amazing to just see all the different things that were happening, and uh, you guys, Tab, you, you stepped up and just served in so many ways, it was such a team effort, and so I thank you for that, and uh, I think we're getting ready to head, I don't think I know, we're getting ready to head into a fun, uh, exciting uh, season that God has in store, and so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, glad you're a part. So look forward to seeing you on Sunday in person, online. We're starting a brand new series called The Blueprint. And uh, we're going to be looking at the heart of Romans. So we're going to be going through Romans 5 through 8 over the next several weeks. I hope you'll be, uh, be here, uh, join online, be a part of that. Look forward to seeing you then.